All right, uh, people online, can you hear? Um, because I'm doing it from my computer, so let me know. What's the chat is it stable? Uh, but yeah, the Q and A. So in the Q and A, put it in the Q and A. Um, anyhow, <laughs> um, I'm Richard Naples. They can hear. <laughs> Good, Richard Naples. I'm a technical information specialist, basically a librarian at the Smithsonian Libraries and Archives. I work in the metadata, ana analytics, and analysis. No, metadata, whatever. I do data stuff. I mean, I do a lot of data stuff. One of the primary things I do is help track the research output of the Smithsonian. So the Smithsonian publishes thousands of articles a year, books, all this, does all this research, and we need to kind of give um, the right um, attribution to the right person to make sure that we know who our Smithsonian people are. That's one of the reasons why I got into this. And um, I'm Deborah Shapiro. I'm a reference archivist in the Smithsonian Institution Archives, uh, which is the institutional repository for the Smithsonian. So as part of that work, I started getting into metadata and description for the uh, organizational structure of the Smithsonian, the people associated with the Smithsonian, um, like historical figures, current people, um, and so both of us now are staff members of a unified Smithsonian Libraries and Archives. Once upon a time, like three years ago, we were a um, separate Smithsonian Libraries and a, Smith and a separate Smithsonian Institution Archives. We still have like a lot of silos in our one unit that exist from uh, that very much longer time period <laughs> before we merged. Yeah. Um, so. We are a really good uh, example just within the Smithsonian of the silos that exist all around the Smithsonian and at any large distributed organization. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the Smithsonian Institution, uh, 21 museums, I, I guess maybe 23, because we have two new ones that have just been established that have not had buildings made yet. Um, we are nine research centers all around the world, uh, Florida, Panama, New York City, out in front row of Virginia. There's observatories all over the place and people go all over the world to do this research. Um, we are also uh, in libraries and archives in addition to many other archives all around the museums. And um, what else? We have, all those museums have their own data. All their data are in their own little systems like EMU or, you know, the museum system, TMS, or, you know, homegrown, home-baked systems like ours, which are both old and homemade. So they don't really interact well with each other. They don't play well. Um, and, you know, among those many, many organizations, a lot, you know, some of them have really kind of been at the forefront of linked data, of getting their data out there. You know, you watched Sarah and, and Andrew's talk earlier today, you know, the Smithsonian has made a lot of steps forward, but it's not all of us and it's not everybody. There's a lot of kind of, you know, overwork resistance to doing this, some challenges with, with really getting everybody to do, the, do it the same way. So, um, you know, but, but I will say across the Smithsonian, the reason why we're here and the why, why we kind of embarked on this, is one of the things we all have in common is names, is people, is organizations are the kind of entities out there that kind of get, um, that do stuff, that, that, that are the ones behind why something's collected or why a piece of work was painted or something like that. And we've not quite gotten to the point where we've dealt with that as an institution. And so talking about all the metaphors and themes, one we have over here in the Northwest corner of the Smithsonian is Mary Vox Walcott, right next to the chat. Um, and we are going to really kind of use her as an example of all the diversity of the Smithsonian collections because she touches a lot of stuff. So, oh, next slide. Thank you. Yeah. So, Mary Fox Walcott, she really exemplifies the diversity of the Smithsonian and all of its collections. Um, so, she and her brothers uh, studied geology together. Uh, she was a renowned scientific, scientific illustrator and botanist president of the Society of Women Geographers. And then very late in her life, actually, she married the secretary of the Smithsonian at the time, the chief executive of the Smithsonian, Charles Doolittle Walcott. Her name changed. <laughs> and then she also at the same time became a big figure in like Smithsonian 
history itself. Um, so we're going to start out by showing you some of these like corn mazes and wheat fields um, of Smithsonian collection of the ways that Smithsonian's uh, collection databases um, are displayed on all of our different websites, these different search portals. Um, and we're gonna do it through the example of Mary Box Walcott. Um, so here she is uh, as an item entity um, at the Smithsonian American Art Museum, which has her botanical illustrations. Um, so they do take particular care to show some of her aliases, but there are no external identifiers here. Um, we don't have any links to any collection systems elsewhere at the Smithsonian, outside the Smithsonian. It's just the Smithsonian American Art Museum. Okay, not to be outdone, here's our second silo. Uh, this is the Botany Database um, at the National Museum of Natural History. Um, so this represents data from the National Herbarium Collection. Here specifically, we have four specimens that were collected by Walcott MV, completely different name from anything we just saw at, at SAM, the art museum. Um, and this collection data has always been in here, tucked inside Botany's collections records, um, but we really want to get it out. Um, there are a few external initiatives like Bionomia that are starting to work on this kind of issue, um, linked data connecting collectors with their specimens. Um, but this is actually our latest and greatest uh, <laughs> example of a Smithsonian silo that really worked to not be a silo. Unfortunately, for names, it still is. So the Smithsonian Collections Search Center um, takes uh, data um, from all different collections and puts it into a central system, uh, EDAN, Enterprise Data Access Network, um, which was created as a way to not take, take uh, collections information out of a silo. Unfortunately, it's really designed to work on objects and items. So specific thingies, the specimens of Mary Vox Walcott, the Ruby slippers, the William Henry Holmes's artist files, um, but not people, not organizations. So you can see in the green highlights, you have three different examples of ways that Mary Vox Walcott's name is presented. We know they're all connected. Edan does not know this. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we've kind of plowed the field and set, you know, threw down some of our fertilizer, and now we've move on to kind of talking about planting the seed. Um, obviously, we at the Libraries and Archives, we care about researchers. And I think that with this sort of situation, a lot of research leads are are kind of lost in terms of, you know, studying about Mary Vox Walcott. It's harder to find information about her because of these kind of silos that are there. So, um, uh, you know, we therefore kind of pursued an option of using Wikibase, a Wikibase installation, in order to sort of start playing around with figuring out how to deal with these names issues. Um, and this is where Smithsonian Wiki names comes in. Um, are people familiar with Wikidata as a thing? Yeah? Okay. Then, um, and uh, do people know about Wikibase? Yes? Good, good. Because Wikibase is sort of like the software platform on which Wikidata is built and all these other, you know, fancy fun stuff and you know everybody's able to to install their local a local version of it um and actually i think wikimedia deutschland now uh, has hosted wikibases so you don't even have to go through the technological difficulties of installing one locally and it was a little tough for us because we're federal and we have a lot of regulations in terms of like the data has to be in the united states you have to you know we couldn't use the docker image we had to do it all manually so it was hard but um but we did it <laughs> And um, so we started, and the reason how we came to the, to wanting to really install this thing is uh, we started years ago during the pandemic. It was a real kind of like blessing in disguise for some things because we had the time to work on the project for cooperative cataloging, which was an effort to put for libraries around the world, like, you know, or around the United States, I guess. I'm not even sure if it's the world of the United States, to get their data into Wikidata around people to kind of start 
investigating how would it look to use something like Wikidata for name authority, for this idea of like figuring out who this person actually is, which is a really essential component of like library science and working and, you know, giving credit to who, who these people are, disambiguating, all that kind of stuff. So um, <clears throat> we, along the way, decided that we thought that a wiki base would help us to kind of tackle these problems internally that we were also facing as a libraries and archive systems embedded in a museum system, sort of like this glam glom kind of thing. <laughs> Um, so uh, with that, and I will say that um, a lot of Wikibases are public facing. Ours is not public facing. It is behind a firewall. So we are not kind of releasing this because for many reasons, um, one of which is like privacy. We have a lot of names here. We, not, we don't want to deal with that yet. So, so right now it's all behind the firewall. It's for internal use. Um, if you did want to email me, I'd be happy to kind of Zoom with you and show you. But um, Anyways, um, <clears throat> I will not spend time on this, and please don't read it much, but I'm just showing it as a kind of idea. <laughs> I'm like, don't look, don't look. No, um, it's, it's just kind of showing the variety of data models that are out there in the glam world for how to deal with these names, with corporate bodies, entities, people, all that kind of thing. Um, and we face that challenge because we were trying to serve all different kinds of museums, libraries, and archives across the Smithsonian. So we tried to come up with our own model. This is a very preliminary kind of model. Um, it's our brave attempt to kind of reconcile all these little data models and work them together and make sure that it would serve everybody and serve the Smithsonian. So if you see Mary, again, she's popped up over. Uh, if you follow it down, we have this kind of like ontology. You know, she's an entity who's an individual entity who's an agent who's a human. So that's sort of like where we have her. And humans a lot different than a, what a, like libraries and archives usually do in terms of like person, sort of human. And we're borrowing that from Wikidata because that's what a lot of people do in Wikidata. So it's a sort of like you know negotiation between the things. Um, so going to Mary, I will show you her page on our wiki base just kind of real quick it looks a lot like wiki data because we really haven't spent time you know making it look different but um as somebody who kind of exemplifies this cross institutional issue she has a lot of statements already um and i will skip over to kind of just highlight a few parts of this so one thing you'll see is a whole bunch of aliases and those are all the ways that we've found that she's been referenced across the Smithsonian. And I'll point out some, some real fun ones, like the uh, Audubon of Botany, she's been called, um, but also Mrs. C.D. Walcott and Mrs. Charles D. Walcott. And at the end, I have a paper linked uh, that our data science lab did on uh, um, identifying women researchers who were cited by their married names and how annoying that is. <laughs> but um, anyhow, so we have these uh, aliases there, and uh, there's other ways even of, of being more explicit in the statements of giving kind of where we found it and how it was identified. We also have things that we can customize, like adding a script to show uh, IIIF, the image interoperability, Frame. another I framework. I think international image. 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 Blah, 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 blah. Um, <laughs> In essence, we don't have to store the images in this system. We don't have to set up another repository or anything like that. We can just link in and display it. And I think that's really uh, a great thing. And um, it's not shown on here, but we have a whole section on identifiers, which you know is yummy to us library people and archive people, yummy, yummy, yummy. So like their orchid, Isney, all these sorts of uh, snack, any kind of identifier that we can find, we put there. And that helps disambiguate that person and link out to systems that are out there that are doing kind of name authority. So it really is that pivot kind of thing. Um, spanning out a bit, since we are trying to get other you know, museums and people on board, we're really focusing a lot on projects within our wiki base. And so we have a property called on focus list of Smithsonian projects, which is very similar to the Wikidata one. Um, and so we're asking everybody to um, to actually like think about what data they want to put in here to kind of describe it in a project in order to make sure that they understand the clear, you know, what, what they're doing, um, why their data's there, 
who are the stakeholders, and then what properties are important to them so that their model might slightly differ from everything else. And it also helps then demonstrate that there are people from across the institution working on the same names and they can visually see, oh, I didn't realize the botany people had this name too, you know, and then they can start negotiating and maybe we'll find facts that are different and then we need to clarify that, so. Um, so, another thing, I will, let me go back a second. Um, Identifiers. We do include one of the big ones. We do include the Wikidata ID. We make sure that we have that for as many people as we can. And that also lets us not store too much data on our system because we can federate. We can query the data and bring back Wikidata, pair it with our Wiki-based stuff. And that's great. Um, so, you know, once we have that set up, we could start nurturing the relationship. So we took a long time to kind of get this set up and then we can kind of turn to all these keepers of the data across the institution and work with them to get them to empty their silos into ours to kind of do it. And you know, problem solved, right? <laughs> Not exactly. <laughs> so, um, you know, we worked on this for like at least a year at this point, uh, trying to get input, trying to get people to give their data. And we find that there are a few specific issues that we've come across that uh, really, you know, are related to the continued existence of these silos and explain why this type of work has really not happened in the 100 and 200 and 1840 something years. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of the Smithsonian's existence, so. Yeah, uh, so we're excited about having come this far. We have this amazing system already configured for us, basically, um, but we still risk en entering a vicious cycle that can thwart the outcomes we want of collecting together all of these names across the institution. Um, da the data practitioners at the, at the Smithsonian who we've talked to have been really excited about it because everybody wants this to happen, but they've also been resistant in some ways that perhaps we should have anticipated and to some extent we did anticipate. Um, They've been kind of resistant uh, to changing their workflows, a little bit cynical. Um, and uh, so after our initial kickoff demos and conversations, we've seen that things start to slow down a bit. And the reasons for this are kind of like what you might expect. So um, they may not be familiar with Wikibase, um, which you know still has somewhat of a learning curve, even if it is a fairly shallow one. Um, so I'd rather be farming. Uh, I want to stick with my own way of doing things. Um, like all of us, they're strapped for resources, time, money, people. Um, and uh, another big one is they don't want to be the beta users. They really don't want their data to go rot in an unused repository. Um, so I helped, did you, uh, they don't, they're a little bit wary of kind of being the first to take the leap to join us. Um, so as a result, you know, we have this system with awesome potential, but that potential cannot be realized without investment from our colleagues in other Smithsonian units. So how do we make sure that we get this good harvest, turn uh, wiki names, from potentially a vicious cycle into a virtuous cycle. Um, going back to our farming metaphor, um, <laughs> we wanna see this kind of as like a, turning into like a crop rotation situation. Um, so there are strategies that we've started to try to adopt to build up this system um, because we really, we know that Wikibase is a really flexible tool with a low barrier to entry um, able to deal with different needs. So all we we know that what we really need to do is to nurture the relationships with those other data hold, data holders. Um, hold their hands, hold their hands in one hand, we're holding their hand, the other hand, they have the data. Um, help them get their data into wiki names. And then hopefully that will start encouraging the next set of data practitioners to do the same. So remember the Tractorcade, if you're online, you might have not heard about the Tractorcade because our audio wasn't working, unfortunately. Um, but this was 
uh, the um, protest of the, the American agriculture movement in uh, the winter of 1979. Um, it managed to earn the wrath of the National Park Service for destroying the sod on the National Mall. Then there was a snowstorm on President's Day 1979. The city is buried in 20 inches of snow. So what do you do when you have all these tractors? You dig DC out of the snow. Um, <laughs> so we're trying to learn from the example of the tractor cage. Uh, so we want to start uh, bringing our tractors to the silo um, of our Smithsonian colleagues. Uh, we are gonna take a more active role in data ingest. So, you know, either walk our colleagues through the process or we take their data and we do the ingest and the maintenance ourselves, at least at first. And hopefully this convinces the powers that be, those powers that exist at any large distributed organization um, that this is a worthy project to maintain. So wake up America, this is for you too. <laughs> So um, it is fall and we've come to harvest season. And, uh, you know, I just want to kind of wrap up with what this whole project has kind of taught us. And, um, you know, we're not sure whether this will actually continue full time, you know, fully, you know, become an integral part of the Smithsonian ecosystem. But we do think in pursuing this, it, it has been a successful endeavor and been worth our time, really. Um, for one, it brought us together. It started conversations that we've been needing to have about what data we have and how it's similar and how it's different and how we can kind of agree on some, some components to that. Um, we felt like it helped get the ball rolling in a way that hasn't really happened a lot in terms of like, you know, past endeavors that were just got overwhelming and not being able to kind of uh, make it work from that, like, that level so um so we 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 felt like you know we we got something together that people can start just working in and start playing with it rather than feeling like they're spending the whole year just planning instead so they're just in there learning and figuring it out from there um <clears throat> we felt that this was a really important way to spread awareness of linked data and you know understanding triples and understanding all these sorts of ways in which this data is important to get out in the world and how you know we're holding on to this data and you got to let it go you got to get it out there you got to understand how this world works now and, and get it out there and we hope that it also established some camaraderie um with it with with our our colleagues and that one day that will help us really kind of figure this project problem out across the institution um so you know i think maybe the Real crops were the friends we made along the way. <laughs> because, you know, focusing on specific technologies, I think, as solutions and having lofty goals, like we're going to invade Washington, D.C. and sit on the mall and they're going to give us everything. You know, that always doesn't work. <laughs> um, but like farmers, I, I, I will just say that I, I feel like glam people are like farmers, we're, we're, we're nurturers, we're maintainers. We want to maintain systems. We want to you know, uh, make the ecosystem better and help people get what they need. And so I think that that is really where, you know, these farming metaphors, everything comes together in terms of like what we hope this will do for us. So um, thank you. And uh, we do have some slides and our slides are available on the stuff. Everywhere, you know, we can meet in comments all the time. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Um, so. How do I get to the first one? I always hate that. Perhaps what we can do is, in okay. the, I think we're able to chat here. Oh, yeah. but so um, are you going to be able to see this? Yes, you will. Okay. Yeah. So female, feel free to email me, um, Naples R. Yeah, I'd be happy to talk more. Um, but yes. Like the actual question we have in, I think that's one. 
um, which is um, uh, what what Caribbean cities are own for model for person and fees. Um, like obviously you know all yeah. the other models that are out there. Uh -huh. Did you um, borrow terms from other anthropologies primarily, or did you figure out like I, I guess what? Yeah. Yeah, well, this is sort of like, uh, also, this is the first draft of our model. Like, we really haven't, like, you know, decided this. But really what it is, is I'm a library person. She's a, an archives person. We have different ways of viewing the world. Like, you know, the art museums are going to want Getty or something like that. You know, everybody is going to want something slightly different. So we knew we had to kind of compromise in some way. Um, and so we, you know, it was just sort of like conversations with people in the room and trying to figure that out and trying to make sense. But I also feel like, I don't know how important it is, the specific model. I think what's important is the mapping and the kind of on the project level to get people to say what their core properties are for their needs in that kind of thing. And we're not, it's not Wikidata, it's Wikibase. Anybody can create a property that they want here. You know, we're not being, you know, I, I could see it being, you know, and, and I could see it being that people have specific, like, you know, library model dash person. You know, it, it doesn't have to be uh, what Wikidata does, and it doesn't have to be one of these specific models. I think it can accommodate all those models with a kind of proliferation of some properties, right? Or crosswalks. So that's my take on it. I don't know. If you... Yeah, I mean, I think the the we wanted to have something so that we could get the data in there to just have the proof of concepts yeah. um, and, you know, also make it a little bit easier for people who are coming in who don't have a ton of experience with like Wikibase, for example, to just be able to contribute. And they, we tell them this is this, if you want a person just put in this, this statement and you like, <laughs> that is what we want you to yeah. do later on, they can like challenge, us, we can have discussions and like change change it more fundamentally. Thank you. Um, great presentation. I guess my curiosity is is the the need the poll like the farming example is it a green that everybody wants? Oh yeah. Common enough that this can become a sustainable practice or solution mm -hmm. direction. Uh, I, I think so. I mean, it, it, you know, you can do a lot with brain, right? <laughs> so even within my own uh, non-wiki work, um, tracking research output, I've already started using this to, to, you know, to kind of do it as a name authority on like, who are the Smithsonian researchers? I, I did a project where I had to like create a biblia, you know, a citation list of all the things done by a group of fellows. And so I was able to use wiki, our wiki base to kind of put all those fellows in, track the dates of their awards, so when they were here, and then use that query in order to query, you know, my system to get exactly which papers fell within the necessary requirements. So, like, it's very specific to my needs, but then also, you know, this thing we mentioned, a bionomia, which is a an effort by one guy, actually, I think, I don't know, but to um, start giving credit to all of the people who go out and collect specimens because that's such an important part of their job and it's such an important part of this of museums that you know they should be getting credit for that and so this is a way of maybe taking all those horrible just like Walcott MV <laughs> things in that associating it with something that then could be built and pushed out and on like you know wherever it needs to go right yeah. so like that's sort of my idea of like the needs are out uh, that are out there um but, you know, there's a reason it's in the libraries and archives, because we do name authority a lot. So, you know, it is something that we are like, we just got to do this, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah. I don't want to spend on anything else time. So just butt in with some more discussion. Um, at first, does you envision this, like, affecting the end user experience, the general public, where... I don't have to go talk at the silo to spell for name five different ways. I'll just talk about it and get it. And if you see it happening in the near future, you know, yeah, that's the one asked. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. I really, I, I, it may not be this. Um, I, I, you know, we've, we've thought about like, you know, 
it's possible maybe we have two wiki bases, one that's public, one that's private. And then we kind of have a system for getting that data out. And then we can use that as a you know, unique identifier that's the Smithsonian ID for people that a lot of institutions already have. We don't have that Smithsonian unique identifier for a person that's authoritative that's you know because we've yeah. and even if you don't have that hundreds of years have yeah. the, you know yes yeah. raw text search thing mm -hmm. yeah um, but but hopefully it'll it'll speed whatever happens that will make it so i guess so. how does this work on the back end how does um, the data get in there do you have yeah everyone editing it or is it just you guys or it's and yeah. i guess when people put in their data do they give it to you in a big basket of data or do you have them mm -hmm. like are you editing my item like yeah we yeah we a little mostly, bit of everything <laughs> we, the funny thing is um as of like today maybe we just got quick statements configured um so yeah. until then we were everything was like open refine and manual yeah um and and uh, i i can muddle my way through pi wikibot so you can set it up to do it. So you can, but only ways, Richard can, yeah. right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> and we did, you know, because of the complexities of being in the federal system, we did have to get a vendor to help us set it up and host it. Um, so they're kind of like helping us, uh, but they're really on the configuration side. Um, data is just us, and we really open refine, really great. Um, really excited about quick statements. Um, really loving being able to query and teach people how to query. And I, you know, there was one page, you know, we do have a number of pages and sections where we're trying to set up a, a user guide and a, you know, welcome guide to help people kind of navigate this. Um, but a lot of it is still handholding hand and, and yeah. you know, nurturing those relationships. We will put your data in for you in certain situations. Um, yeah. So. And that's all those identifiers. Like, yeah. Just pull them from wiki data because I imagine it would be a little glorious to do it otherwise. Um, yes and no, like, uh, for, for example, we track all the ORCIDs, which is a researcher identifier for, oh, yeah. for our data. So we're able to put that in and other, you know, institutions, a lot of the identifiers are even for Smithsonian systems, oh, like okay. the American art museum has an identifier. And so they can kind of pull that in. Yeah. Um, I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's a lot of, um, but we, we do use a lot once we have the Wikidata ID, it becomes a lot easier to pull in whatever we want. And also once we have the Wikidata, we can just leave it in Wikidata. We don't have to bring it in. Yeah, that's We just connect to it, key. right? Yeah. yeah. And like privacy is a big issue. And so like, that's another one where like, we, we don't have to spend the time arguing about gender. We can just leave that up to Wikidata, you know, like you know, some of those discussions. Yeah. Um, but yeah. 